The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yes, uh, hello everybody. It's uh, Chris Cantel here, and I'd like to welcome you to this uh, to this webinar. And uh, we've got some special guests with us. Uh, we've got three people on the call with us here. We've got uh, Todd, who you're familiar with, but we've also got John and Chris. So that's another John and Chris. So you're familiar with uh, John uh, Pierce and Chris Cantel. That's me. But uh, we've got um, uh, John Ormiston, and we've got John Limberlocker, and they're going to be uh, showing us something very special which they've uh, put together and it's uh, they've got a really good uh, system which they'll i won't talk about it i'll let them do all of that um but let's just um do a check and can everybody um hear me talking first of all and can everyone see the screen let's do a, a test on that great great yes so uh thanks uh, greg uh, mr rick over greg John, Graham, Joy, Glenn, Glenn, oh, they're coming in. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for uh, giving us some uh, heads up on that. Okay, so let me um, introduce uh, John. Uh, John uh, is going to be presenting uh, to you. Can you hear me okay, John? Yep, I hear you loud and clear. Great, okay then. Well, let me hand over to you and, uh, and uh, everyone sit back and enjoy the presentation. All right, hello everybody. This is John Limbacher. And I've got Chris Ormiston on here with me. We'll introduce ourselves here in a second. But uh, what we're going to be talking about today is high volume keywords that are worth a lot of money. These keywords that we call buyer keywords. And uh, we're going to show you, you know, how we rank for these today. And there's something a little bit different going on and you might have seen stuff similar to this in the past but i think you're going to be in for a real treat when you see what we're doing and how we're doing it and uh, you know i i came across this really cool slide the other day and i had to throw this in here and i put the question what's the difference between these guys the guy asking for food and the guy asking for leads and it's about two weeks of no search traffic is the difference here. <laughs> I just I just had to share that. I thought this is like, oh, this is just classic. But uh, anyway, the, the thing here is, at this point in the game, very few people know how to rank for these type of keywords. And I know you guys are probably at, at the elite group here because of your association with John and Chris, the other John and Chris. And I know you guys are at the top of your game. That's why we wanted to come in here and show you what we're doing to give you even more advantage over what they've already given you. Because I don't know if you guys are familiar or not, or you're aware or not, by being part of their group, you have a huge advantage over most people out there. Knowing how to get on the board and knowing how to rank sites and we're going to show you like if you've got sites that are stuck on page two and three we've got almost like i hate to say magic bullet but almost a magic bullet for that so anyway that's what we want to show you and again very few people know how to do this but we do we know how to rank these type of keywords and so do our students because we teach this as well and we've just come up with something really really cool for you guys like this is one of our students here andrew and he's he just sent us a an email about this about all of their keywords on page one top ten here is uh you know and everybody says that proof is like the the top banana here so we have a ton of proof that I'm going to share and, and show with you guys. These are SEM Rush screenshots, and this is a day spa that we started doing this technique on, and it just flat took off. And this is pretty similar to just about everything that we've seen, everything that we've put this on. We get these massive climbs. And one of the things of, about this, when you're climbing these keywords, when you do this stuff right, it increases all of your keywords, not just the ones you're focused on. Like this here, you know, everybody says, well, this is just for simple keywords. These here were life insurance keywords, and they had an 8% boost in the number of ranking keywords 
that's huge because they already had 400 keywords. So that's like 32 extra keywords that they now rank in the top four. That's pretty cool. So again, you know, it's just I'm, I'm showing you a lot of proof here about what we're doing. And even before I'm showing you what we're doing, I'm, I'm showing you some proof. <laughs> now, I wanted to point this out here. When you see rankings, when you start doing something, this is something we've seen for years and years, and it's actually based on one of Google's algorithms in, in their patent. And what will happen is they start sending you up, they start pushing you up, and then they drop you. And they do this for a reason. They do this basically to see if you're gaming the system and if you'll change. They call it the, the Google Dance. And what's really important when you're doing SEO that we've found is that you don't change course when this happens. And I'll show you a little, little further into the presentation how we're seeing this a lot. And you just you don't change course, and then all of a sudden, boom, they trust you again, and up you go. So it's a very common thing. Here is uh, here's actually some of those patterns. Like you'll notice this one here, this is a, a day spa, bikini waxing in Point Loma. They were on page eight when we started sending uh, sending these uh, different signals to them. And what they did, they didn't go up at first. They dropped at first. Then they bounced around, and then look what happened. Boom, right to the top. Went along, bounced down, bounced up, and then stuck at the top. Same thing here. This is a chiropractor with a zip code. On page six, boom, to page one, and then bounced around a little bit, and then stuck. We see this very common. This is a very common thing when we're doing what we do. And we've seen this for years so anyway i just wanted to share that with you here is another sheet of these and again it's just showing this is pretty much across the board how this goes so here's the big question you know you guys probably know if seo shifts and change and the question is what happened to the traditional seo is it really gone and I think you guys probably know it's not. Linking is still really important. Getting your page content is still really important. And once you get a little deeper into this presentation, you're going to see why, too. You're, you'll see why that stuff is still important. And the, the new thing that you're probably missing. And I put down there, big brands are dominating. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute. But... You've probably seen this when you run a search for almost anything now. You'll see big brands at the top. And that is a new thing. That's a new factor that's been going on actually for a little while now. But it's because of what happened. You guys probably remember when uh, Rand Fishkin ran his little search uh, test here a while back. He did an experiment. And this was several years ago. And this is what most of the SEO industry is basing their user experience metrics on is based on this stuff and and really what it came down to is click through rate rand did a test and he proved that click through rate would move the needle what he did he had this site that was ranking number 7 the IMEC lab and it's you see the timestamp up there at 603 p.m. He tweeted out to his group to have all of his followers go to Google and type in IMEC lab and then click on his site. It was basically a click through experiment. And what happened three hours later, that site that was in the number seven position went to number one. Three hours later, that's 901. So he proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that click through was an important factor it was followed by bounce rate but guys that was just the beginning artificial intelligence has really taken over this is what Google's rank brain algorithm is all about and it's not just the click-through anymore it's not just the bounce rate there's a lot of new signals behind the scenes that is taking place and it's beyond the traditional SEO. It's beyond the link building. It's beyond the on-page optimization. Google's looking at these new factors. And if all you're concerned with 
is those beginning signals, those bounce rates and click-throughs, you're missing a huge part of the boat here. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we rank easily these buyer keywords. We're doing this for our clients and we're doing it with no fear of penalty. The way we're doing this, you know, people call SEO black hat and all this stuff. The way we're doing it is absolutely natural and absolutely undetectable. So there's absolutely no fear of penalty in any of what I'm going to show you. If you do it right, if you do it the way I'm showing you how to do it. Our new strategy, what it does, it trains RankBrain. It trains it who belongs at the top and it helps you rank higher. You know, most of you, I know a lot of people are stuck on page two. I've been hearing that for years. They're like, I'm doing SEO, I'm doing linking, I'm, I'm building content, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm still stuck on page two. This, what I'm going to show you, this new strategy is going to help you break that barrier and get you to page one. And the cool part, it only takes two minutes of work to implement this. And you probably think I'm crazy. You're probably thinking there's no way in hell that's going to work. But I'm going to show you. you. You will see by the time we get to the end of this, you're going to see how I'm absolutely right. It seriously takes about two minutes to set this up. Here is more, you know, more proof. <laughs> this is another site. This is a publisher. And you can see 31% in keywords. June to July. That's just in a one-month period. I've got a lot of these. I've got some that are, are current. Some of these are over the last year. We've been doing this for a couple of years now. Here's a prosperity company. Same thing. It's just once we start doing this, the keywords climb, the traffic climbs. It's, it's everything you want. It's boosting the traffic by boosting the ranking. Here's one for facials. 300% increase in the traffic. Here is more of these things, more, more of these. And like I said, guys, we have proof coming out our ears. We've been doing this for a while. And let me, let me get back to, I, I told you I'd talk about a little bit about who we are. Chris and I, Chris Ormiston and myself, John Limbacher, we've been doing this stuff since before it had a name. When we started doing SEO, they didn't even know what to call it. And we've driven over 3 million visitors a month through SEO to our clients. And a lot of the original algorithms that Google was shifting and changing was basically forced by us. I know that's a big claim, but I've got stories about that and it would blow your mind. Once we get into this, I'll, I'll share some of that stuff with you. But we have effectively predicted every major shift. Like we knew this one was coming years ago and we started preparing for it. So that's us. That's me, John on the on the left, and Chris on the right. Chris, are you are you with us here? I'm here, just answering some questions. All right. Well, cool. I will let you talk about uh the the screen coming up right after this, but this is like some of the clients that we've ranked for along with, you know, a bazillion little small businesses but uh, I'll, I'll let you kind of talk about this this was kind of your uh, your child here <laughs> yeah you bet so one of the companies that we worked for was asics shoes and i know you guys are probably familiar with those guys they're a big running shoe company but one thing that um they came well, we were talking with them and they said one of the things that they're having a hard time moving was their wrestling shoes and so they hired us to promote them uh, so that they could move some wrestling shoes. Now, they we had 26 keywords that were like this, tennis shoes, women's tennis shoes, men's running shoes. You know, it was, there, was a, there was a whole bunch of um, keywords they were doing. And um, this is an example right here of uh, the wrestling shoes that we were promoting. And they were like nowhere on the board um, for wrestling shoes. And so um, we did exactly what we're going to explain today. And they not only started um, getting massive traffic, but they also... Um, ranked in the autocomplete as well as a process of what we were doing. And you can still, you can try it right now. If you type in wrestling shoes, you're going to see that ASICS is in, is, uh, in the list. And so um, ever since that time, and this has been over three years, 
um, that this has been in the autocomplete for um, ASIC shoes, and this has brought them an unfathomable amount of business for their wrestling shoes. Um, and so the, the point that we want to make here is that the work that you do is going to sustain itself after a period of time, and it'll be, it's a long-term effect that this affects. This isn't a gimmick. This isn't something like a fly-by-night. This isn't a loophole that we found in Google, although we've played with lots of those and they're fun to do. This is something that's stable, it's secure, and it's something that John and I have been doing for at least four years now. So what we're telling you, we have lots of experience. This is actually our third entire revision of the entire system. And um, we do this, and this has been kind of our secret weapon for a long time. Uh, we do this because it works, it's safe, our uh, customers are safe, and uh, we rank quickly and we rank effectively by um, following these processes. So um, yeah, so ASIC Shoes was a fun, fun little project that we did. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you guys get this, I don't, I don't know if, if this has really jumped out at you. When you start typing a keyword and it recommends your brand and the person clicks on that, that's a whole different search than when they started. And Google is, is trying to anticipate what you want. I said a, you know, a little while ago I'd talk about the brand, the big brands being having an unfair advantage. That's really what's happening here. When the brand comes in place with the keyword, Google's trying to figure out, you know, it's trying to anticipate what the searcher wants. And the way to do this is to send signals to Google to show them that when somebody wants wrestling shoes, they want it by ASICs or they want it by Nike. And when that comes up, when you click on that, like let's say somebody starts typing that and they see that and they click on the ASICs, guess what comes up? It's all ASICs brand. It's like that whole search page is all ASICs. It's all their social media. It's YouTube videos. It's their site. It like totally eliminates the competition. So there is such massive value in this. It's unbelievable. And that's what we're going to show you how to do is how to connect your brand to the keyword so this happens for you. Really, really cool, powerful stuff. But what you what you want to do here is you, you got to for a minute to really get your head wrapped around this. Kind of forget about what you thought you knew about SEO for just a minute here. And we're going to show you we get into cracking the Google patent. And I know I don't I don't know about you, but when I think about these patents, it, it looks like that. And it's like, holy shit, you know, what does what, what all that mean? But what we found with this latest patent is. Google is is favoring these natural language patterns. You know, NLP, this gives NLP a whole new meaning. <laughs> there's NLP in the sales world, but it's very similar. It's like there's a really close match here to what this new algorithm that Google has is to NLP. It's natural language patterns. And one of the things that we found when some things rise to the top, when you start looking at all this gobbledygook and patterns and patents rather, what we found was there's three types of searches that Google's identified, informational, transactional, and navigational. And the navigational is the most important. That is almost like a, like a buying trigger for a customer for Google. That's a trigger for who belongs at the top. And we'll get into that, you know, kind of breaking that down for you and showing you what's involved in those triggers. But once you understand the triggers, it's really easy to manipulate Google and get them to favor you and get them to push you to the top. So informational search, that's stuff like, you know, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? It's just questions. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just people, you know, being curious. And then transactional, this is like how much does something cost? When somebody runs a search like that, Google knows that's a search for a buyer. Somebody's looking to buy something. That's why they show you the buy options there. On the informational, what happens is they show you, you know, information. They show you stuff out of Wikipedia a lot of times over on the side. So they're figuring out the intent of the searcher and they're giving them a good user experience. When it comes to the navigational search, navigational search tells Google something at a little different meaning. It's a little deeper. It tells them basically 
that the searcher knows what they're looking for and they know where they're looking for it. They're just looking to get there quickly. Like when you put stuff in like Scottsdale Dentist and even you add the name of the dental practice on there, that's a navigational search. What uh, another example I use is like, Pizza. If you were searching for pizza, you might know that you want your pizza from Pizza Hut. You might also know that you want it in your city. Like for me, that's Huntington Beach. And you also know that on that site, they have a menu and that's what you're really looking for. So you might run a search like Pizza Hut in Huntington Beach or Pizza Hut menu in Huntington Beach. That's a navigational search, and it's telling Google that not only do you know what you're looking for, you know which brand it belongs to. That's a really, I mean, guys, get your head wrapped around that connection. When you send those type of signals to Google, you're connecting a brand with a keyword. And when they get that, that's how that search came up for the wrestling shoes. We connected the keyword to the brand. That's the magic behind this. So it's these NLP, natural language patterns, that's doing that. What it does, it, when these signals go through, this represents real user search behavior. And Google's AI, remember that's artificial intelligence, it's learning. Every time a search happens on Google, which is like a gazillion times a minute at this point, they're learning from everything. They're learning from the search and they're learning from what happens behind the search. Like what does the user click on? How long do they stay? Do they go back and revise the search? Did they get what they wanted? It shows the user's intent. When Google looks at all that data and they figure, okay, the searcher started with the search, they ultimately wound up on this page and then they were happy, they were satisfied. That shows Google the user's intent. It also shows popularity. This is a comparison between the old school SEO, the link building, and the new signal, which is search. It's a form of popularity. We used to show Google popularity solely by links. Whoever had the most links had the most juice and won. Now Google doesn't really trust that so much anymore. It's still valuable, but there's this new layer on, on top of it to show popularity in a, in a secondary way by people searching. The, these signals show Google who belongs at the top. And until now, until we figured out how to do what we do, this could not be manipulated like link, link, link building. So it's absolutely true. These NLP signals, these natural language patterns are influencing Google's algorithm. And they're doing it in a very, very big way. So back to the factors, you know, you've got the authority backlinks, you've got on-page optimization. That was the old school. And again, those, those things still work. Those are still in play and you still need those. But this third of this algorithm, this is an extra third now that's on top is this natural language patterns. So, if you're wondering why SEO is so hard, you're probably missing that third. And if you are, it feels like you're pushing a boulder up a hill. So what we're here to do is make SEO a lot easier for you. So if you're ready for that, I'm going to share these five new NLP triggers that make up that third of the algorithm. That's a third of the rank brain algorithm based on these five triggers that you're going to learn. And basically, it searches from mobile devices. We used to do this, like Chris had mentioned that we've been doing this for years. We started off doing this just off of desktops. And it worked really, really well for a long time. But then mobile started getting really prevalent. And we realized we were missing a major trigger getting searches from mobile devices, people with cell phones running these searches just like it's happening in the real world. Next is proximity search, is having people, like think about this target, think about your website or your business being in the very center of that. And it's kind of hard to see because it's so small, 
but there's a bunch of little dots in there. That represents users searching in that close proximity area. And then you move out in like a 10 or 20 mile radius, and then you've still got people searching, but it's less people. Then you move out into a 50 or 100 mile radius. You've still got them searching, but fewer and fewer. So close proximity search to where the business actually is. Now, some people say that's only true for local, and that is not true. This is true for any business. Think about it. Even if you are a manufacturer in a particular city, it makes sense that people in the general vicinity would know about you and run more searches than those on the outside. So this is not just for local business. This is for all businesses. Those navigational searches that I talked about, that is a huge trigger here. Brand searches, again, back to the brand. This is making it unfair to the little guys. And if you run a search, I guarantee you're going to run a search for almost anything right now. And you will find there's major brands dominating the top. Like if you're, if you're looking for a product, like an online product, I guarantee you Amazon's almost always going to be there at the top. It's because so many people have run a search with that keyword and Amazon in it. It's trained Google that Amazon is probably what they're looking for. If you're in the real estate market, you'll see the, the big ones, you know, the big, uh, I forget what they are, but it's like Trulia and, you know, real, realtor.com. Those guys dominate the top because they're known brands and Google has figured that out. If you're looking for home products, I can almost guarantee you're going to find Home Depot at the top. And this is why. It's because of that. And the fifth trigger, the, this is, I, in my opinion, this is the biggest one of all, is revised search combining the brand. And what this is, this is somebody that runs a search and didn't find what they wanted, and they went and they added the brand to the keyword and re-ran the search and then clicked through. That's what we call pogo sticking. And Google hates pogo sticking on other people's sites. And guess what? They don't like it on their own site any better. <laughs> so <laughs> when you do this right, it creates that trust. It's almost like the link building created trust. And it gets top Google rankings. Now, I've got a picture of a bunch of boats out there in a the harbor. The deal is... When you increase the ranking, it's like it's like raising the tide in the harbor. All the boats go up. So when we do this, we might be focused on a handful of keywords, but when we send these signals to those keywords connected to that brand, all the keywords rise. In fact, a whole bunch of new ones show up that you didn't even anticipate. And we just got this. This got sent, uh, I think this came in the... Uh, our support desk and Chris copied it out and sent it to me and this guy says uh, please excuse my language but holy <laughs> he said are you guys responsible for this and our first thing was like oh god what do we do what are we responsible for and he said I hope my rank tracker software isn't malfunctioning and the, the lol kind of set us at ease but then when we looked at the screenshots He's like, these are all new listings in the top 50 of Google in the last 30 days. These are listings he did not have before. And we thought, wow, a whole page of them. But then we went further, and it was a second page and a third page. It was like there's 217 new keywords that showed up for this guy. This was a dentist in the, in the Southern California area. So... When you rise the tide in the harbor, all the ships rise. It's the same thing with your keywords. When you increase that trust in Google, all of your keywords are going to rise with it. And this is how you do it. It's with search signals. You get all these different type of devices sending the search signals into you, and you're going to get top listings. That's going to drive more traffic and generate more leads, more sales, and more profits. And it's going to put you above your competitors. So what we did, we built a machine to actually do this. We realized how important this was. And we built a machine we call SitePop. 
And what SitePop does is it provides all five of those NLP triggers everything you need to push you up in Google higher. It provides you that entire third of the, of the ranking algorithm that you're probably missing. And it's the only tool that addresses these signals. There's been other tools on the market. We've seen them for years and they're not the same. This one is sending mobile signals. This is doing all the stuff I just went through. Those other ones, they might be clicking on your site. They might be getting the click through and lowering the bounce rate and all that stuff. But they're not doing what we're doing. They don't know to do this stuff. And the, the really cool thing about this is we're doing it from real users. This is not some hocus pocus black hat crap using proxies. These are real cell phones. These are real users real devices that make up our entire network. Each user, each cell phone out there, we've got thousands of them. We've got tens of thousands of these now at this point. Each one of them runs about 17 searches per day per device. So it's just ex almost identical to what a real user does. And it, it searches out, like when you put a site in here, it will find out the, the geolocation of the site and it will do the proximity searches. It looks for the devices closest to that business to run the searches there first and then it trickles out as it goes out. We also perform most of the searches in normal local time, daytime business hours. Not to say we're not running a few in the middle of the night because we do because it's natural but the majority of them, it follows exact natural behavior. This is crucial. This is, a, this is a screenshot of devices in our network. When we started out, this was uh, this is a while back. If you look at the map now, you can't even tell it's the United States. It's just a bunch of pins on the map. But these are the devices. These are the users in our network. And the next question is, is this just for the US? No, we've got these, we're populating these all over the world. And like I said, these shots are from a while back. Now we've got them all over Europe. We've got them all over Australia, Hawaii, uh, Middle East. They're everywhere. So we've created a network, a worldwide network of these cell phones and devices. Some of them are on tablets, some of them are on desktops. It's all a very natural mix. And it's like having all these users at your disposal to send signals to Google on your behalf. That's what we've created. That's what we're really excited about. And it moves the needle, not just for local sites. This is, uh, this is CBD. This is like CBD oil. And notice, you know, over here we had the big drop. That was the Google, uh, the Google shift. Uh, that was the Google Dance, rather. Drop down, but look at what happened. It popped right back up. This is keywords, 3,000 keywords, 3,100 keywords, and up 7% on that. That's huge. And yes, look at this. They're doing backlinks. They got 40,000 backlinks to the site. That got them down here. Adding that third did this. So... Is this important to add on top of the backlinks? I think it is. This is, uh, this is actually the app that shows on the user's device so they can see their keywords and they can see their, uh, their ranking on this. And you can see this is from uh, just a few months ago this year. This is not like old outdated stuff here. Pretty cool stuff. Here's another one from a, a real estate company, really, really expensive, top-end, high-end luxury real estate. Very hard to move the needle on this stuff. And this is just within a couple of days. This is 325 to 327. And notice the move on this, like Crested Butte Real Estate there went from 10 to 3. This one here, Crested Butte Property for Sale, went from 10 or, sorry about that, Crested Butte Homes for Sale went from 8 to 1. So it's like incredible how this is moving the needle very, very quickly. This is another one that just got started. This was a property management company. 
and they weren't in anywhere. When we started this, they were nowhere, and then all of a sudden, a couple of them started to pop up. So it's really, really interesting how this works on, on the vast array of businesses that we've thrown at it. So here's how it works. It runs a search for your keyword. It, it grabs a device in our network and it runs a search for your keyword. And then it scrolls the search results looking for your domain. It'll take the first instance of your domain that it finds. And a lot of people ask, will it click on ads? It will not click on ads. So there's no worry that this is going to jack up your pay-per-click cost. It will not do that. So you don't, you don't ever have to worry about that. It looks for the actual first page it finds in the search results, the organic search results. Now, if it doesn't find you in, like, say, the first five pages, it does that thing that Google hates. It pogo sticks back and it adds the brand. Then it reruns the search. The important thing about this is it shows Google that the searcher did not find what they were looking for. Google did not provide them the right user experience, and Google hates this. They hate it on their site as much as they hate it on yours. And it proves to them they didn't do the right thing. So next, we add their brand to it. It reruns the search. It finds you at the top, and it clicks through to visit your website. Spends several spends time on several random pages, and ultimately we take it to the contact page, and it spends a minute to four minutes on there, and then it closes out the session. Now the reason that that is so important of closing the session out is that shows Google you found exactly what you were looking for. And that's what they love. They love this. If they don't close the session out, it tells them, well, the user's still active. Maybe they didn't get what they were looking for, and they keep waiting, waiting to see what they do next. So the fact that we close the browser session out sends that, nails it down, that that signal is they, they got what they wanted, and they're happy. So some, some key features here is this ranks traction keywords fast. When I say a traction keyword, I'm talking about a keyword that you rank on page two, three, four, even five. Those are what we call traction keywords. You're already up, you're just not to the first page yet. It pushes those up really, really quickly. I don't encourage you to go after keywords and, you know, John and Chris, they, they also do this in their training. They, they tell you, you know, don't go after a keyword you're, you're going to have a lot of trouble ranking for. Take one that, that you know you can get quick results and do that and then move on to the next one. Another thing is, if you're doing this as a business, if you're doing SEO for clients, this is going to keep your customers longer. If you're getting results for them, they're going to stay with you. It's fully automated. We have a white label version I'll talk about you know, in a minute here. And uh, it's real time reporting. The app shows, like when you install our app on, on a phone or a mobile tablet or, or a desktop, it shows the reporting of the keyword right there in real time. And you get full control over all the campaigns. You can change the keywords out whenever you want. Uh, in the agency version, you can even control the flow of searches, how many searches go to uh, to each site. Now, let's talk about setting up a project. This is where, remember I said it takes two minutes to set this up? It really does. I'm going to show you. It's seriously like two minutes to set this up. You've got to know what keywords you want to do. you got to do a little bit of research ahead of time. But if you know your stuff, you can literally set this campaign up in two minutes. And all it does, a campaign, or a project rather, a project consists of a domain. It's like, what domain do you want to optimize? You can have multiple brand variations. Like if people call you by different things, you might have a couple of different ways that you do your name. Like you might have Company Inc. or just Company or Company Website different ways that, that people would search for you that associates your brand. So we allow you to put multiple variations of that in just to make it look natural. You can put up to 12 keywords and you get one project code. When you generate the account, you get a project code 
that project code connects to the device. And each device you connect a project code to, you get roughly 250 searches a month. So every device in the network is generating these searches for your site. Now, your device isn't what's sending the signals to your website. Your device becomes part of the network. It's all the other devices in the network that's going to be sending the signals to yours. Now, if your device is in the close proximity of your business, your device might be sending signals to your own site. But it's only going to be a handful. Most of them are going to come from other devices in the network. Don't worry. It's not scary to set this up. I just told you what's involved. Let me show you how to do it. It's so simple. You name the project. You put the website URL in. And you put the company brand name. And if you hit enter, it'll allow you to put multiple company names. Next, you enter your keywords. Then you put your contact page URL in here, how many searches you want, and the company address. And it automatically fills in the latitude and longitude. If you're a home-based business and you don't want your address in here for some reason, it's not shown anywhere, but if you're still a little cagey about that, just put the city in. And it'll just geotarget the center of the city, no problem. Like I said, this is not scary, and that literally is it. If you can't fill out those few form fields in two minutes, maybe I can help you with it. <laughs> so anyway, this is, you know, I talked about the white label report. Notice at the bottom it says agency details. This is a screenshot of the actual app. We call it marketing assistant, so it's not connected to the site brand or the site pop name. That's why it's white labeled that way. It's white labeled under marketing assistant. So when you use it for a client, all they know is marketing assistant, which isn't attached to anything. They don't ever know about the site pop name. And your agency details are showing here. And then it just shows the rank of your keywords there. So who will benefit from this? I think anybody basically that owns a site and wants to rank is going to benefit from this. Beyond that, this is perfect for affiliate marketers that want to rank a bunch of sites. Uh, SEO guys that just want an easy button. Like I said, this isn't an, this isn't a magic bullet, but this is an easy button to get these signals if you if that's what you need to rank. Anyone wanting a low cost, high profit business, this is a perfect solution of a of a product that you can offer for sale. It gives agencies a competitive edge, and you know back to the question of who will benefit? I say only everyone. Only everyone can benefit from this. Just imagine being able to control the best traffic on the planet. And when I say that, I, I really mean that. Search traffic is the best traffic on the planet because it's in flow. All the other forms of advertising that you can buy are all disruptive. Think about that for a minute. If you're paying for ads on other places like Facebook and, you know, all these other social media platforms, those people aren't there to buy your stuff. Those people are there to interact with their family and their friends. So you're trying to disrupt that with your advertising. When they search on Google, they're looking to buy something or, you know, they're, they're looking for what you have to offer. That's the best traffic on the planet. This allows you, imagine being able to compete with those big brands. What if you were able to compete with Amazon? That's what we're talking about here. You will have something no one else has, and you'll be able to get sites to rank where no one else can. And the biggest thing here is you can't get this anywhere else. There's no one I know of that's doing what we're doing. There are guys that are doing similar stuff that's old school, but it doesn't have these five factors in it. This is what's going on now. So, you know, you're probably asking, you know, at this point, does this really work? And again, we're back to the proof. You know, we've got one after another. I'm not even going to go through and read these things, but these are, these are all testimonials we're getting sent in. Here's a, a shot. Somebody sent in a screenshot here was on page six, a lot of competition. 
brand new keyword I've never ranked for. Number one, worse than page 10, a lot of competition. Now number nine. So again, these are, these are coming from people. This is uh, Anthony. This is one of our, uh, one of our agencies in San Diego. Got a guy in position three for Spanish flamenco guitarist. And that's a, a Spanish word. So this actually ranks in, you know, in Spanish speaking words, any language. It doesn't matter. If it's a search on Google, this will help you rank for it. This is a beta tester. Now, Will, he's very, uh, very on top of things. He monitors stuff and he does a lot of testing. He uses Pro Rank Tracker and he said 50 to 60% of his keywords showed some improvement after using this. That's pretty impressive. This is Andrew, another agency ranker. Uh, he says, we were able to snag two top 10 rankings within two weeks of our first client we put into the system. Not too shabby. These are happy people. These are people that are using this and getting results for their clients and for themselves. Here's a cosmetic dentist. He sent screenshots in. And this is actually one of the keywords here for an orthodontist in Valencia, California. Started off on page five and immediately just shot to the top. And notice the dates there. This is nine. This is September of this year through the beginning of last month. He just banged him up to the first page right out of the gate. That's Orthodontist Valencia, California. Now, you could do this with microworkers. You could try and do this on your own. But the problem here is what is it going to cost you? Not only in the cost of the microworkers, but in the time. That is a huge factor here. For you to get 500 searches, we've found that that's kind of the magic number. 500 searches is what really kind of moves the needle for us. And some sites need more, some sites don't need that much. But 500 is a pretty round number here for what works pretty well across the board. If you were to get micro workers in India to do this, they, they cost about 25 cents each. So each project would cost you about 125 bucks a month. That's pretty cheap. That's not bad. But the problem here is in the time management to manage 500 people doing a 25 cent task and making sure they do it right and don't screw you. And then even at that point, you got all your searches coming out of India. How natural is that? It's not. It's not natural at all. And that's what's happening with most of these other guys that are doing this stuff. They're using these micro workers. Google, you think Google doesn't know that? You think that's not really <laughs> showing up on somebody's radar that that's what's happening? So what if I told you that we could give you 500 searches off of our network a month for under 10 bucks and have it completely automated and be able to set it up in like two minutes? That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing for, for you guys as a group for John and Chris. That's what we're offering. We have a pro version of the software. You can get SitePop Pro for $97 a month. There's a $297 to get in, but we're giving you a bonus of three months service with that. And what you get in pro is you get 10 projects. So basically... If you have 12 keywords each, that's 120 keywords. And with 500 searches per project, that's 5,000 searches a month. And your cost to get in on this is $297 today. Normally, it's $297 a month. And at $297 a month, that would be a deal. But like I said, we're going to give it to you guys. After the $297, you're going to get three months of free service with that. And then it's going to kick in at only $97 a month. So for under $10 a month per project, you're going to get 500 searches. That's pretty crazy. And that's not the best deal. If you're an affiliate marketer or you're a, you know, a little guy and you're not really doing this professionally, this is, this is for you. This one right here, the only way to go. 
But if you're in this to make money and you're an agency and you're doing SEO for real, you're going to want the agency. The agency gets even better pricing. It's $4.97 to get in. If you do it before Friday, just like this one, you're going to get three months of service for free for $4.97. And then it's going to go to just $1.97 a month. And for $1.97 a month, you're going to get 50 projects. That's like $4 a piece per month. Guys, you can sell these things all day long for 97 bucks a month. I've got some agencies selling this service for $2.97 a month for one, for one site. It's crazy markup. It's absolutely nuts. Now, we've got a special link here at site-pop.com forward slash SBT. If you guys know you want this, you can go there right now and you can get this. Like I said, this is a very special offer. Our normal pricing, if you go to our site, if you go to site-pop.com, you'll see it's $2.97 a month for this, $4.97 a month for that. That's month after month, and it's a total bargain. But you guys are going to lock in, and, and I didn't say this before, but this, you can lock this price in for life. We will not raise this price on you. If you get in here at $197, you are going to get 50 projects a month for that price. And we, like I said, that's locked in for life. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so if that wasn't good enough, though, how about the you know the massive bonus if that's not good enough let's talk about bonus two i am going to do next week i'm going to do a live webinar for you guys this is going to be a user data case study and we have analyzed all of the successful campaigns which is almost all of them at this point and we've pulled out the absolute top strategies that really make sites pop to the top and i'm going to share that stuff with you I'm going to show you how to get the most out of this, how to do your keyword research, how to figure out what keywords that you can that are your traction keywords. It doesn't matter if they're the, the keywords that you want to rank for. You go for the traction keywords first. There's a strategy behind this, and I'm going to share that with you and show you how to get the most out of this thing. And like I said, we'll do that next week. I don't have it scheduled yet but I'll schedule that for you guys and then we'll record it. So if you can't make it, you'll still get access to it. We also, in our members area, we've got several of these that we've done in the past, but this is going to be a fresh one for you and you'll be able to interact and, and ask questions live on that. So like I said, that's going to be next week. That's bonus number two and bonus number three. This is for agencies only. We have the app white labeled, and you get that with the agency version. We've also created a WordPress template funnel. This is a marketing funnel to sell this to businesses at 97, 197, 297 a month. Whatever you want to sell it for, it's up to you. You can sell it for whatever you want. You can give it away as a perk if somebody signs up for an SEO package with you. You can use it however you want. But we've given you that funnel. And also, if you've got Kartra, we have a full Kartra marketing funnel. And I can import that right into your Kartra account if you've got Kartra. And, you know, you're probably wondering, well, if I don't have any devices or if I need more devices, you can get these devices now for under 30 bucks each. You can get them at Target and Walmart all day long you can see that's my shopping basket there i just bought like 20 of them and you can get these track phones so if you need more devices like let's say you want to set this up and you want to do it for clients and you don't want to require them to put their put it on their phone or maybe they don't want to do that just go buy a, a 25 dollars phone and hook it up for them put it on your wi-fi you don't have to create you don't have to buy the service for the phone this does not require phone service it just requires wi-fi access from a, a cell phone from a mobile device here is a rack I'll, I'll show you where to get this rack in amazon 
And that's what I do. I've got these things just lined up in my office for clients. So it's really, really cool stuff. And again, that's a bonus. I'm going to go over that for all of you guys that get the agency version. I'm going to show you how to, how to run this, how to sell this, how to make a lot of money doing this as a service. And again, guys, it's $4.97 to get into the agency, and then it's $197 a month, and you don't have that fee for three months. You've literally got three months to get one client that will pay for this whole thing for you. That is pretty much a no-brainer. And this expires Friday night. That's midnight Pacific time. So you you guys, right now, we're on... Uh, we're in the Pacific time zone. It's about 1 p.m. right now, Pacific time. So this runs out at uh, at midnight tomorrow night, Pacific time. I would really, really encourage you to jump in on this. We do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you get in and you decide it's not right for you, I don't know what would cause you to think that. But if that were the case, uh, just ask us within the first 30 days, and we'll, we'll happily just refund you and go on our way. But we we did this. We we want serious people in here. That's why we didn't just do it at 197. We're doing 497 to get in. That is the monthly price. That's our normal monthly rate. We want serious people in this. You know if this is right for you. And if it's not, <laughs> then it's not. And that's perfectly fine. But if you get it, if you get SEO and you understand the value of this, you'd be crazy not to jump on this offer. Why are we giving it away? I mean, that is literally giveaway prices. Why are we doing that? This is a question I often get. And the answer is simple. It's pretty self-serving. It's we want to build the network. The more people that get in, the more devices, and the more powerful this becomes. Remember, guys, this is real devices. These are real phones running real searches. Everything's randomized, just like a human does it. So. That's our goal, to build this thing so big and make it so undetectable that it's just so, it'll be the most powerful SEO ranking software on the planet, if it's not already. That's why we're doing it. That's why we're making it so cheap. It should be an absolute no-brainer. So if you want to rank, SitePop is the ultimate ranking tool. Go to site-pop.com forward slash SBT. If you haven't done that already, you should probably go do it before you forget, because after that, that, that bonus goes away. It's You no longer get the three months for, uh, for free on the service. So definitely go there, site-pop.com forward slash SBT, and hop into this thing. And there, there's really... The, no reason we've taken the risk off it. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee. There's really no reason not to give this thing a shot. And I think you'll be happy that you did. Here is like agencies. We're getting emails from agencies about this. We got this is one from Mango Branding. Uh, immediately increased traffic to our website after starting to use SiteProp. Uh, and again, we've got just these one right after another. We've got case studies. We've got proof coming out our ears. This is the top left. That's a driving school, California driving school, uh, computer network technician, San Diego. Uh, this one's interesting here, the bottom right one. That's actually my name. I was on page four for my own name before I put this on. And then I popped it on, boom, right to the top. And then it was funny, I, I dropped even for my own name. That's that Google dance we were talking about. And then popped back up and stuck. Here's more. I mean, like I said, we've got, we've got thousands of these. And they all pretty much show a similar story. It's you start off down here. It puts you to the top. You bounce around a little bit and then you stick. That's what's happening pretty much across the board for everybody that's using this the way we teach them to use it. 
we do have we have had a few people that come in and they they try and do crazy shit with it and it doesn't work and it's not meant to work other than the way we built it so if you just follow the instructions and you just do it the way we tell you to do it this should work out really really well for you again here's a here's a mattress company here's a semiconductor company and it again it's just it's just working a wine company same thing here's an automotive repair and it just it doesn't matter what industry you're in it doesn't matter very few things matter if you're ranking and you've got your basic seo in place this thing just works it just boosts them up again here's pest control these things just go on and on and on the charter company in in australia so again this isn't just for the us it's it's a worldwide network here's a, a project company in in the uk same thing so i don't know what else i can say about this i guess uh, we should probably answer some questions chris i'm sure there's there's probably a, at least a couple of questions out there at this point <laughs> Yeah, you bet. So let me cover a couple of those. While I'm covering these questions, um, there's something wrong with the PayPal adaptive payments on the site. If you could take a look at that, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the um, the error so that you can take a look at that while I'm answering some questions because there's a couple of really good ones that are out there. All right. Well, cool. Yeah, guys, if okay. if you're having a, a problem with the with a PayPal, you're trying to use PayPal and it's not working or whatever. Um, just give us a, a little while. I haven't seen any errors yet on that. We've we've gotten PayPal orders even as far as this morning, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure. Maybe something just now happened or something. I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, um, if that's the case and you can't get the order through, shoot me an email and I will make sure that you get in so you don't miss the bonus. My uh, my email is john at internetdominators.com, and uh, we want to make sure that nobody that once this misses out on it. So if you have any kind of problem at all, go ahead and shoot me an email, john at internetdominators.com, and I'll go ahead and make sure that you get taken care of. All right, so the first questions um, are all based around like devices and things like that. So let's talk about devices and how this works. So I think that you all get that the um, the whole premise behind this is that we have real searches happening from real devices that are spread um, all around the, the United States, actually all around the world, but you know, United States uh, based businesses will get the United States searches, the UK will get the UK searches, that kind of a thing. But basically the whole premise is like when Google sees searches happening on a particular keyword for a certain um, website or whatever the ranking page is, that's when it knows that it's popular. And it's, I mean, it's never been different. It's a popularity contest. It's like trying to be um, prom queen, right? So we're all trying to be prom queens for orthodontist um, Santa Clara, California, you know, that kind of a thing, right? So to do that, we need to have devices that are doing the searches, just like people would be doing the searches. And so um, when we have these devices that are out there, this is what I do. All of my SEO companies run the marketing assistant on their own computers and um like john decide or john has um he does his a little bit differently he has like banks of of um of phones and stuff at his place and that works for him for me i don't like doing that personally because that's a lot of devices i have to manage and really the customers that i work with they're like super happy to help out in any way they possibly can to help with their seo because they're direct beneficiaries of when they rank and so they're really eager to do anything I ask them to, to help them out. And so um, they run this on their computers. They, it runs on Mac, it runs on Windows, it runs on Android. It used to run on iPhone, but iPhone in the last iOS release, just like a month ago, iOS made it so you can't run any background processes, I guess because they're, they're batteries, uh, I guess they're, be, they're, they're battery sensitive. Um, so no matter what, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter if you're Facebook, it doesn't matter if you're Instagram, nothing. Um, you can't run a background process anymore on iPhone. Now, when that changes, we'll bring iPhone back. Um, but for right now, um, everybody's dead on iPhone. 
So um, it runs on Android, it runs on Mac computers, it runs on PCs. Um, so anything that's like that, it, it, it'll run from anywhere. It'll run from your home, it'll run from your office, um, it'll run from your kids' computers, your wife, it doesn't matter. Um, you should put them on all the, all the different computers that you have. And so that is that answers about five questions that we had on here about devices, what can be used, how they work, that kind of thing. And when you install these devices, they immediately kind of go to the background and you never really see them again. It's like, it's just silent. So like when you reboot your computer, the devices, it just starts up automatically and just um, minimizes itself into the um, taskbar. So you just never see it. Um, and so it's out of the way, it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And um, what I found is that my clients, they don't mind running this at all in their offices. There are some exceptions. Um, there's a financial office that we, we do some marketing for and they don't allow any software on their computer unless it's approved by their IT staff and they're pretty you know, stringent. So there's a couple of cases where, where we do things and what we did there is we had them install it on their computers at home. And so there's, there's a nice workaround there. So um, that's how I work um, the devices and that's how John works the devices there. Um, they both work. It just depends I, on. I, on what you I want actually to do, do the, the same thing. I encourage everyone to yeah. do them, but I've just found, you know, if you've got finicky clients, like we have some that that run uh, law firms, and they're just really edgy about running anything on anything they've got. So for them, I just I just plug one in for them and let it rip. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There you go. So it's a good workaround too. Yeah. Um, Greg Young just mentioned um, he's been on three months with us, and he says. Um, um, when he joined us three months ago, he says that he has keywords that have made made up or um, um, several keywords that have been uh, pushed up to page one. He said, "Great presentation, thanks, Greg." So thanks for thanks for being on with us, uh, Greg. It's great to be great to have you on with us. Um, let's see here. Um, big question is: Is this recorded? Is there going to be a replay? Yeah, uh, we'll definitely send it out because we know that a lot of you guys are all around the country, you're around the world in a lot of cases, and we know that there's some limitations. So we'll definitely send out a replay so that you can see this all over again. Um, another question too, let me get back to where it was. Does it work for Google My Business? Now this is a question we get all the time uh, because Google My Business is a huge player for local searches, right? Um, especially for um, companies that that you know people are looking for, for locally. So yes and yes and no. And let's talk about the no first. It does not directly work with Google My Business because this is not an algorithm for Google My Business. You can have a billion people click on Google My Business and it's not gonna help your ranking for Google My Business, right? So it's just not part of that algorithm, but the algorithm is closely tied to the websites that is associated with the Google My Business. And so while the, re while the website gains popularity, it will directly affect your Google My Business and it will rank your Google My Business higher indirectly when your website gets ranked higher, when the pages on your website. So as your authority grows on your website, your Google My Business listing will naturally grow as well. So that's what we've seen for the Google My Business. Um, so um, that is the GMB question. Also, um, there's a lot of people that are asking, does this work on e-commerce? And it absolutely works on e-commerce. We have a nationwide company that we do SEO for, for e-commerce. Um, um, they're a big SEO, you know, player. They they pay us like between three and five thousand a month to do their SEO, and um, we definitely use it for them. And so we've seen some really good um, results from that. In fact, we were able to get them from um, nowhere because they opened up like a whole new line of product. Um, they went from nowhere to on page one for five of their top seven keywords in two months. So, and these are not joke keywords either. These aren't like super long tail keywords. These are like like two word keywords that are directly um, related to their product and their business. So um, yeah, it works very good for e-commerce. It, it's just anything that you can rank with SEO, you can rank using this process. Now, that being said, we're working on a couple other processes. We had a couple of people ask, does it work, work in YouTube? Does it work in Yelp? Does it work on Amazon? I'm an Amazon retail store, that kind of thing. And um, yes, it absolutely does work on that, but the processes are slightly different. And so we're building those in now. And everyone who buys today will be able to get in and have Yelp, Amazon, Bing, YouTube, all those different um, other uh, locations 
um, without any extra cost. It'll just, you know, uh, when, when they become available, you'll have them um, available as well. So just want to throw that out there. Um, let's see here. So each, um, yeah, so there's a, an, another question about devices, which are how many devices do you need for a project? To, right now we have two devices that are needed for each project. And we're trying to bring that down to one. And so we're doing a bunch of testing right now to make sure that, that the network is sustainable at, um, at a one level. And we think that it is, but it may take us a month or so to make sure, because what the last thing we want to do is not have enough resources to run the, the searches, right? Because we don't want to run too many searches on each device. That's the problem. Otherwise, it becomes not normal. And um, second of all, it makes it so that it uses up more battery. Now, the battery that it uses is less than one half of 1% of what a phone uses. And so it's very, very little usage, but it uses a little bit. Um, and so we just don't wanna do too many, uh, mostly because it's not natural on, a, on any device. Um, not everybody's a super um, searcher like you guys are. I mean, all of you guys, you probably do a thousand searches a day. And so that's normal for you, but uh, for most people, that's, that's not the case. Um, all right. Uh, the next question is: Is if I buy at a lower level, like a, at the at the 297, um, can I move up to the 497, the agency, or I buy at Pro? Can I go up to an agency level uh, later? And yeah, that's um, that's always doable. We can we can definitely um, make that happen for you. Um, how long does it start, or how long does it take to start seeing results after you first start a project? Um, I got an answer to that, but John, do you want to? answer that one? How long does it start to uh, take to start seeing results? It's just like anything else with SEO. It's, it's, there's no way to really answer that. We've seen some, like I showed that one with the, uh, the property in Crested Butte. We had movement within a couple of days with that. We've had other ones, you know, that take a month or two. But I would say you should definitely see something happening in, in the first month for sure. And again, yeah. I don't like to over promise. I like to over deliver. <laughs> so, but it, it's like anything else on SEO. There's no crystal ball to say, if you do this, then that's going to happen exactly. And although the, the, the thoughts that I had on that one were, although that some people use our system and they don't do uh, really any, any, what I would say reasonable on-page SEO and they don't do any linking and they still rank, that's not what we recommend. We recommend that you link, that you do on-page, your content on-page is good and it has the on-page optimization um, set up in place. And then this is the other third of the algorithm, which is the behavioral side, which is do people like you and are they visiting you? Are they searching for you directly? And so that those navigational searches are super important, but it's not 100% of SEO. So although this gives you the boost that nobody else can do, that, that's where you get the edge, it's not everything. And so when you ask that, you need to be asking yourself, am I doing proper linking and am I doing the proper on-page optimization for the keywords that I'm trying to rank for? And if those are in place, yes, you will get fast results with this because Google's um, artificial intelligence moves fast because it doesn't have people behind it. It's just an algorithm. And so when they see activity on a certain keyword for a certain, um, a certain uh, um, company, like the ones that you're marketing for, Google loves to play the trend game. And if something is trending, they want it to be on top. And this is the behavior that we see. When you show that it's trending, all of a sudden you're up on page one because Google wants to show those trends. And then they'll drop it off of page one so that they're not the one causing the trend. And that's what the Google dance is. They'll drop it down. They'll see if the trend is still going on, which it is, and boom, they'll pop it back up again because they want to do that little test to say, are we the ones causing it or is it still a trend? So um, that's why you see that little Google dance sometime and it bounces around and boom, it hits the number one spot. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm using Wi-Fi. Should I use a VPN to change the IPs like every few days or weeks? Um, basically, no. Um, using uh, Wi-Fi is just fine um, because if you think about it, if you work at, say, Intel Corporation, there's like thousands and thousands of searches coming off of the, the IP that hosts their, um, their whole company or at least lo each location, right? And so 
it looks like you're just um, doing a search from inside of a company instead of from your, you know, uh, an individual who's just roaming around or an individual computer, right? So that's okay. You don't need to, to worry about swapping your IPs. Um, it doesn't matter that much. The one thing we do recommend is that you have a separate Google account for each of your Android phones. So it appears natural, which, you know, every iPhone, um, every Android user rather, um, typically has a different Gmail account. It's not like you and your kids and your wife all share one Google account for all of your phones. That's just totally not natural. So um, yeah, just have a separate Gmail account. You're fine. Um, let's see here. I see a lot of people asking if they if they buy the Pro, can they later upgrade to the agency? And and the yeah. answer is yes, absolutely. Yep, you can always upgrade or down down downgrade anytime you want. We're we're not gonna you know we try to help you guys be successful. It's not like we're we're trying to stick it to anyone. I mean, we just want to grow the network because really what we want to do so it works better for us. It's totally selfish on our side. We just want it to work better. And when it works better for us, it works better for you too. So everybody wins. Like John was saying, uh, all the boats rise. <laughs> all ships rise when the tide comes in. That's right. Okay, so this is, there's three people to ask this question so far. What if there are few or no mobile members in the area that I need to rank in? It just doesn't matter that much because Google takes into account all searches. In fact, let me tell you a little story about when we were developing this version of, um, of the software. This is the third like complete rewrite that we've done for this. Um, each of the other times have been doing using different techniques and strategies. And um, from what we learned from there is, is, is this one here. But when we were building this one, we had our developers, we had a set of developers, we have some developers here in the United States and then some in India. And our Indian team, they just set up, they just propped up a, a local server right there in their office. So it was, it was a local server. And they were working uh, locally because their internet wasn't super good. And so it's easier for them to just kind of develop right, right inside their office, right? So the searches that were going out were coming off of their server, just like a computer that was in their office. And what they would do is they would go and they would type in San Diego dentist and they would go to page 10. So they would take the number 100 listing and they would find out which dentist this is. And then they would start and they would just like literally just um, type in the, the keyword San Diego dentist. That was what they were going to rank for. Right. So they would be testing our processes to make sure things were working right. And every two to three weeks or so it would show up on page one i mean it would it would you know basically do the google dance and boom it would hit on page one and they would roll their eyes and they're like dang it we got to go find another one so they go they would stop that campaign and they would go back to another one that they found on page 10 and they would do that and every two to three weeks they would have to keep going back and finding new companies because it would rank too quickly for them and it was super irritating for them and it was super funny to listen to them complain about how these sites were ranking so fast because it was a, it was a nuisance for them to have to go back and reprogram it, or you know like you know start a new a new um, campaign, and it really doesn't take that long. So I, I mean they're just being whinies, you know. Um, <laughs> but it was it was interesting the process that it was working so well that every couple of weeks those keywords would be on page one and they have to go back and find another one. And so that being said, the searches were coming from India, and they were ranking on page one for San Diego. So. While that's important, and we know that that's part of the algorithm, um, Google's emphasis for local searches, Google's emphasis for all searches. And so don't get too hung up on whether there's enough, um, you know, uh, searches that are local or not. It all works. And because of our, our algorithms that we have set up, that the closest devices will search for you first. I mean, it just makes sense. And then it'll go out in those concentric rings. So, yeah, don't get hung up too much on that. Even though it's important, it's not uh, a deal killer uh, for searching. Yeah, you know, just kind of to, to add to that, when we first spooled this up, we we put this out to a couple of our, our own internal people to offer it to them to test it. And one of those testimonials that I showed you from Anthony, who's one of our resellers, he's down in San Diego. He found that he put 10 people in right away, 10 customers of his and they were all in different places. So the only devices in the network at the time 
were just those 10 users. And just off of the 10 users that were in different locations, those started to rank in, within 30 days. So it was, it, it, it's crazy how powerful this thing is. <laughs> yeah. And you know really where it's the most powerful? Is when you've done everything you can do on SEO and you can't get it past the barrier of page two, or if you're stuck on page three and, and the competition is just fierce, try this out because this is what's going to push you across the finish line. Because once you start adding behavior on there, nobody else can control behavior except you. So now that you can control behavior behind yours, all of a sudden, boom, you belong on page one because you can you can basically turn the dial up on traffic and make yourself the most popular and you can trend and that's how you can you know get to page one so that's really where um you can see super fast action because you're doing everything else right already everything else is lined up you're just missing a third of the algorithm which is the traffic part now that you can get that you can be where you need to be which is on page one um greg was asking does this work on new sites and i think john already answered this one but i just want to cover it again yeah it works super good on new sites because again Google's looking for trends, and if you can trend a new site and people like it, then Google will rank it. Um, okay. What happens to any projects not used? I'm not quite sure what you're asking there, um, Rudyard. If you want to ask that in a different way. I, th I think probably what he's asking is if, if like credits spill over to the next month and they, they don't, it's just in the pro yeah. you've got 10 available and you could use one of them or you can use all 10 of them. Yeah. Now one difference. So like if you only have one client right now, you can use your, your project for, um, for your one client and just add more as you go along. It's not a problem. Yeah. One difference I want to point out the difference in the pro versus the agency is the pro comes with an allotment of up to 500 searches per month per project. And that's not editable in the pro version. So if you want the full 500, you just connect two devices. If you want half of them, you just connect one device. In the agency version, we actually give you the option to control that. So you have 25,000 searches at your disposal based on 250 per device. And you can allocate those however you want. Like you could set up one project and send 5,000 to that one project if you wanted to, as long mm -hmm. as you had enough devices to support that. Yep. So we have a couple of national campaigns and we have like five to 10 devices on each one to provide enough searches for the, um, the, search, the search power that we need for those national keywords. Um, and I, I've gotten a lot of these, um, a lot of questions here about affiliate offers. So let's talk about affiliate offers real quick. So like if you have a site where you're offering a product and you're, and you want to rank on this, this is perfect for that. But if you're an affiliate and you're trying to rank like an affiliate page, that's going to be up for, you know, maybe a week or two weeks, it's probably just not enough time to be able to rank that, nor do you have control over the on-page optimization or the linking or anything that happened to that page. It's just too fast for affiliate offers. So it's probably not a good solution if you're an affiliate marketer. Like if you market other people's products, this probably isn't um, the best solution for that because this is a long-term stable solution that, that you use to rank um, keywords for a long period of time. This isn't like an in and out. Google does not like in and out stuff. Yeah, I saw, so, I saw another question on the affiliate that said uh, they don't have a brand, so how would it help them? And yeah. even if you if you have a website, you have a brand because your URL is really that's your brand. If brand. You don't have one. Um, so here's a good one. Here, here's uh, uh, Brainard was asking. Um, so do you have experience ranking sites with curated content that refers to sources at the end of the post and do they rank well yeah i mean part of the algorithms are um when you have good content and you link to authoritative sites that's an important part of the the seo algorithm for on-page optimization so yeah i mean you'll you'll rank well if you do that properly and um so yeah we we highly recommend 
using not not necessarily curated content. It's that's not a bad thing to do, but definitely to um, at the right level link out to authoritative websites. Um, so that's definitely a, a good SEO tactic and strategy for sure. When you get to the top, do you still go full out and change your drip mode or can you even stop at some point? Do you want to answer that one, John? Um, so basically what James is asking, he says, okay, so for instance, you go full out, you get to the page one. Now, do you turn it down or you turn it off? Why don't you share your thoughts on that one and then I'll, I'll chime in um, afterwards. Sure, sure. Abs absolutely. I would say you never want to turn it down or turn it off. If the keywords that you put in, let's say you put 12 keywords in there and they're all now ranking on page one, what I would do is I would just start the process back at the beginning. I would go and I would do another search and see what your new traction keywords are. And I just kind of swap those out and still keep the same amount of signals. This is like a snowball effect. When Google starts sending you more traffic, this will percolate out and you'll start getting more and more and more. So you don't want to cut back. You don't want to like have Google see, oh, well, we're the only ones sending traffic to this or, or we're, we're the only ones doing this. So I always, I always, I, I never let up off the throttle. I just try and expand the program. So that, that's what I would say. And in the agency version, if you decide you want to do that, in the agency version, you can go back and you can you can reduce the amount of searches that a particular project gets. Yep. So I can tell you what I do with mine. So like when I rank, um, I will leave it up for a minimum of three months after I rank on page one in the top three positions, minimum, because what I'm worried about is Google doing the dance. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna take their traffic away and still see if people are naturally going to that site. And the chances are they're not. They're only going there because Google is, um, is ranking them high. So I leave them in there for a minimum of three months. In fact, most of the time I never stop it because why, it's so cheap. I mean, it costs me like five bucks, 10 bucks a month to run all those searches. Why risk it? For 10 bucks when especially when a client is paying me somewhere between you know 500 and and five thousand dollars to to rank their site what's 10 bucks yeah and so i just never turn them off personally i'm thinking you probably could but why risk it i mean once once the traffic's there if google does a dance on you and they find out that the google is the one sending the traffic and you're not that popular then they're going to take you down and then you have to work all over to get it back up again is that worth 10 bucks no so that's just my thoughts on it is, is even though you probably could, I wouldn't, I mean, for, for how cheap it is. All right. Yeah. We're going to have to, we're going to have to get with our, um, with PayPal adaptive. Um, I know there's been a couple of, of questions. This is going to be up until tomorrow. So don't, don't stress too much about it, but um, yeah, something with PayPal is going on. Um, and we're going to have to get to the bottom of it because it was working like up until just a few minutes ago. So sorry about that. Just one of those PayPal things. Yeah, it might be PayPal itself. They occasionally throw a throw a wrench in the works. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get I got a buddy who works for PayPal and you wouldn't believe the shenanigans those guys pull up in there. It's insane. <laughs> but, you know, somehow they keep going. Um, so, um, Rahendra was asking about, does, uh, will this help rank a YouTube or Facebook post or business page? Um, so basically anything that ranks on the Google search engines, it will help with. Now, if it's Facebook that you're trying to rank and stuff like that, um, probably it's, I don't, I don't know if you wanted to put a lot of effort into ranking Facebook as a company, but you probably could if you want to do something like that. Um, here's, as far as YouTube, we're going to have, we're going to have a, a certain process for YouTube, uh, coming out here. I, we've already talked about that a little bit. And so once that comes out, it'll be, um, optimized for YouTube and it'll, it'll work in the same uh, general way, but it, we just need to tweak it for YouTube to search for it and, and to match the different videos properly. Um, so as soon as that's ready, um, you guys will all have access to that. Yeah. Yeah. But wait, like if you're, if you're trying to optimize social media pages, you probably want to wait till we get that in play because the way it yeah. works now 
is it's just looking for the first instance of the domain. And if you if you put your uh, you know your keyword for let's say Facebook for instance or LinkedIn or any of them, what's going to happen is it's going to look and it's going to see which page ranks first. And if it's not your page, that's going to be the page that gets promoted. And that doesn't help you. So if you are going to do a social media site make sure that the keyword you put in brings your page up first. Otherwise, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot with that one. Yeah. Good question, though. Okay. Um, so, yeah, when you sign up, you should have your credential sent to you via email immediately. We have it set up so it'll automatically kind of create your account. So you should get that immediately. If not, um, go ahead and put your name in here and I'll, uh, I'll take a look at it for you. All right, I think that covers most of the questions. Okay, cool, yeah. And, and again, if any of you guys are having trouble with the PayPal, go ahead and, and shoot me an email at john at internetdominators.com. And I will make sure that as soon as we get that ironed out, we'll uh, we'll send you the link back so you can uh, you can hop in there and, and get in on this. So how many devices do I need for max coverage on an agency? Um, so that actually depends on how much competition there is. So basically the way that I gauge it is I go out there and I look to see what kind of, um, like the total number of searches per month on a keyword. And what I do is I try to to make, to get at least 50 to 80% of those. Like for, for keywords that have less traction, it's easy to get 50 to 80%. Um, you never want 100% because that's a little, it, I think it's pushing it a little too hard. But if you're getting 80% of all the searches out there for your website, you're absolutely the number one most popular person because all the rest are spread out over five or, or over like 10 different um, sites. So if you're getting 80%, that means that you're basically, they're getting 10%, you're getting 80. I mean, it, it, it puts you so far ahead of the pack. You, you, don't, you never want to double what's the total searches that are out there. It's not normal. I think I think his question was related to how many devices he would need to max out on the agency, which would be a hundred at this point. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I misunderstood the question. No, no problem. It was, it was good info anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Blithering on. <laughs> but it's it's actually a very valid question that John covers in a couple of the trainings, which is how many searches do I need for a keyword? It's a very valid question because it's not only just it's not always just 500, which is appropriate for most uh, local keywords. Sometimes you need a thousand or two thousand or five thousand. Like I have one site right now or one keyword that I'm doing right now that requires five thousand searches a month, and that's about 50% of the um, the search volume on it. And so I'm aggressively um, hammering that one at five thousand, and um, with my agency account, um, it fits it fits in nicely. It's only 20% of the searches that you have. Okay. I see a couple of questions about older Android devices and iOS devices, and you want to just kind of hit that real quick on what, what yeah. devices work and don't work and all that? Yeah, you bet. So um, so basically, uh, we have, we've gone through and, um, and we've tested pretty much everything there is to test, and like, um, somebody was asking about in, um, in iPods, if iPods work. No, iPods don't work. Um, also, a, a somebody was asking uh, about iPod touches. iPod touches don't work either. Um, we've tried all of those. Anything that's older, um, Android just doesn't support. And so Android forces us, like when we write software for Android, they force us to upgrade our software to accommodate the, the latest software version. So if you have an Android phone that's like on a super old OS, almost nothing is gonna run on it because everybody's in the same boat. We all have to like update our stuff or else they kick us off. They literally remove our apps off of their, their platform if we don't keep up. 
So um, when you're picking out Android phones, make sure that their current Android phones that they that they can take the latest operating systems that they can be upgraded. Otherwise, um, it's only a matter of time before you can't run the software anymore because Android forces us along um, with the, the the advances in and in the operating systems. So we don't. Although the older devices may work perfect as a hardware device, as long as they can um, accept the the newest versions of Android, then it's not a problem at all. But if it's an old version that you can't upgrade, probably not going to run so well. Okay. Um, the keyword that I'm going after has 35,000 searches per month. So Jim, if you wanted to talk to us about that individually, we can give you some ideas on how to how to do some of the the, the more national, you know, more popular keywords. Send a, uh, an email to John at internetdominators.com and we can talk to you individually about those. That's a, that's a good question though, because you know we do some of those ourselves and we can talk to you about how we do those. Okay. So yeah, any questions, send it to John at internetdominators.com and we'll, we'll reach out to you. All right. Well, I think we should probably wrap this up. This is, uh, I think we're at the end of our questions here. Okay. Yeah, but I'd, I'd like to just thank you, uh, thank you, Chris and John, for a, a fantastic presentation. That was really good. I was glued to the screen. Um, are your um, your your logic on uh, the approach to the build of the system is um, is spot on. I can see how it's how it's working and how you're you're fitting in with the Google algorithm. It's uh, it's really good. Um, and uh, it's, it's very exciting for the guys, I know the guys who are on the call this evening and uh, their businesses and so I, I'm sure they're really excited by this. So thank you for such a great offer and, um, and uh, what you've put together. It's really good. Yeah, thanks for having us on. This has been fun to talk about. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll, I'll say goodbye and then I'll let you say goodbye as well. So everyone that's on the call, uh, thank you for coming along and uh, spending all your time here and hope you've enjoyed the presentation. I do encourage you to jump on board this because uh, this is really powerful. Um, as you know, SEO has moved on so much from, you know, even a couple of years ago. And um, what we're looking at here is something that really works and uh, something you should really implement into your business. So if you could take hold of this and run it, as John said, you've got nothing to lose. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. So jump on board and, and use it. That's what I would recommend. So thanks everybody and uh, catch you soon.